Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. It's time for another VIO video, one of my favourite uh, range of computers. Um, about a year ago I bought this one here, the Sony VIO 24 inch touchscreen all in one PC from around 2009. Price wise it was probably around about the £1000 mark when it came out. Um, a lot of that price probably went towards the large screen which was quite big for the time period. Um, sadly it arrived to me in the state we have here. Um, the glass digitizer panel has been severely damaged, it's cracked with pieces of glass rattling around inside the case. Uh, it must have taken quite a spell whilst in transit. I suspect the weight of it probably didn't help it because it is a very heavy machine. So for packing something like this, you really do need to go to town on it, which I do myself whenever I'm passing any equipment. Uh, the packing they used was minimal, just a cardboard box with a small amount of bubble wrap. Um, you can't really blame the courier in this instance because it was so poorly packed. At the end of the day, when you're packing something like this, especially with this weight and these sharp corners, you really do need to go to town and add loads and loads of packing, especially on the corners, to take the impact should it get dropped. So I took pity on this PC and with a partial refund I decided to keep it with the hope of removing the front broken glass digitizer panel for the touchscreen. Um, I have saved a search uh, of a replacement screen on eBay but uh, what I did find was so very expensive I just couldn't justify spending it on this old computer. I'm talking hundreds of pounds as well. Um, so as time passed by I lost interest and I put it into storage. But now I'm ready for the, to face the challenge of trying to remove the digitizer, which I'm not sure if it actually is possible, and do out with it altogether, and then restore this PC back to its native operating system, which is Windows 7. So as usual, I thought I'd make a video about this. So for that and hopefully more, stay tuned and we'll see you right after the intro. So let's take a look at the specifications of the connectivity of this computer before we go any further. So it's a VIO L11M1ES 24 inch touchscreen all-in-one desktop PC. It has an Intel Core 2 Duo E7500 2.93 GHz processor. Um, I think it came with 4 GB of RAM um, from new, but this one here has been upgraded to 8 GB of RAM. It has a 500 GB full size hard drive and a DVD rewriter and it has Windows 7 Premium. Maximum screen resolution is 1920 by 1080. Let's have a look at connectivity. On the left side there you have a audio out, mic socket, headphone socket, two USBs, firewire, SD card slot and a Sony memory stick slot. On the top you have the power button and a display off button. And on the right hand side you've got the access to the DVD-ROM drive. A built-in webcam with a screen resolution of 640x480. And round the back you've got an Ethernet port, optical out, three USBs and a button to connect to the wired keyboard and mouse, which I don't have. When this machine first arrived with me it had a version of Ubuntu installed, which I've never managed to get to boot. I suspect um, the image is probably corrupted in transit to me when it received that bump. Um, so I'm going to um, f forget that, just format it and uh, start again and we'll put Windows 7 in like I mentioned before. So before I start taking the computer to pieces to uh, get that broken glass screen out, or sort of digitizer, um, I thought it would be a good idea to attempt to reinstall Windows 7 first, just in case there's any problems uh, crop up further down the line through the installation, like drivers for instance. Now I have done a quick uh, Google search for the drivers and on Driverscape the drivers are there and for other operating systems as well. So well, we'll get Windows 7 reinstalled first before we start taking it apart and see how that goes. So next up we need to get into the BIOS to tell it to boot from a USB flash drive so I can uh, get my installation of Windows 7 up and running. F2 uh, enters the BIOS on the system and here we have another VIA with another sparse BIOS. Hardly anything in there at all. Just some hardware monitoring for all the many many fans and uh, some other basic things, and obviously the boot priority. And finally, after messing around with that boot priority and selecting the right uh, order, we were up and running. So I continued to install Windows 7, and it went in quite quickly. And to my surprise, it, I was welcomed by the chime of Windows 7, so the sound drivers went in straight away. Um, the graphics drivers um, 
weren't quite there. It was just a standard BJ adapter I think it installed. But uh, I went to driver's cape and got the correct NVIDIA driver, installed that, that went in fine. Uh, there were just a couple of other drivers missing. Um, I forget what they were now off the top of my head, but I found one of those. And to my surprise, suddenly Windows 7 updates started coming through. Um, I was quite surprised they were still available actually. Uh, because it's been some time since I've installed Windows 7, I think it's been at least a year. Um, so well, after it was doing uh, another update, or not, an installation of a driver I think it was, the computer went to do a restart and then disaster struck. Uh, as it came back on, I was welcomed by a message. Power supply fan speed error. Press F2 key to enter the BIOS setup menu. The system sh will shut down after 3 seconds. So, um, I couldn't believe it, so something had failed, uh, hardware wise. So I went back into the BIOS, went to that sparse hardware manager where all the fans were, and sure enough the power supply fan stopped spinning, or said it had. Uh, I couldn't believe it, I've come this far, and uh, I must have jinxed it in the beginning when I said let's install Windows 7 first, to see if we have any problems further down the line, because sure enough I have. So I suppose the next thing to do now will be to open the computer up and have a look inside and uh, see if it's something simple like dust build up um, or I don't know, anything else it could be. Okay, so let's see if we can get into this thing and uh, see what's going on with that power supply fan. So if I've only seen these four screws here for the back leg and there's some screw covers there. Let's see what we uh, see what we find out in here first. Might be some more screws hidden away underneath. Oh, that's not a straightforward. Let's get it. Oh, there we go. Oh, see, there's a plastic cover that unclips. That is heavy in itself. There's the hard drive in there. Full-size hard drive. It's interesting. Now where are the rest of the screws? Look at the it's out of here. I see some clips there which you can't see. That could be it. Surely there'd be more to it than that. One of those situations where it's going to be so obvious, I should eventually get it open. Let's have a look under these covers. Could be a case that the front unclips and lifts off at the top or hinges off. The insides could be sat in the back. Same with the Apple computers. I've never taken one apart, but I've seen that the you take the screen cover off using suction cups. That's how you get to the inner workings. Expecting lots of bits of glass to fall out of this. And eventually get it open. Yeah, it seems to be it's just clipping on. There's my plastic. Well I didn't notice the camera wasn't recording, got the back off eventually. Um, it was clipped on across here and then just lifted off. Um, noticed four fans so far, or three. There's that one on the bottom there, one there and one here. I suspect that's probably the power supply fan there and it's absolutely caked with dust. That's the back there. Took a bit of getting into that did, it wasn't very obvious at all how it came apart. Look at that, look, you can see the um, extra sockets there that are blanked out for other models. Got a HDMI input or output there, probably um, composite video in with audio. Uh, I'm not sure what those two would be and there's a couple more there as well. It's got a date stamp on it there, 2009 so I was right about that. So much dust in it, no wonder the thing's not working. I've got a few screws out so far from this massive shield on the back. I suspect uh, some of the weight is here actually. I 
I think they've quite a good sound system actually because the speakers are quite large. That uh, screw's got a circlip underneath of it. It's interesting. That plastic case on the back was um, a bit misleading really because the build quality seems to be inside where you don't see it. Lots of arrows with the screws for people like me so you can't miss them. Right, is that it? Nearly. Two more there. Or one. It's always a good idea to film these anyway when you're taking stuff to pieces. Because then you can remember where everything goes, especially if you put it back together months later like I do sometimes. When you're waiting for parts. Is that it? There we go. Wow. That is uh, quite heavy in itself. Look at that, that is a lot of fans. So you've got one, two, three, four, five all together. So, that's nothing to do with the power supply. Oh, it is, it's there, look. Wow. That's it there, so that's the power supply fan that's not working. You do hear it come on initially, then it stops. Look at those capacitors quickly, none of them are bulging. I've got a couple of uh, Pentium 4 vios actually where they're starting to leak on the top. I need to uh, start changing those out soon. So that's your motherboard on that side then. Um, two CPUs. That's your memory there, that's probably the graphics card underneath there. Some uh, extra c connections there for different things. Oh look at that look. There's two places there for two TV cards, for two TV tuners, A and B. So I guess that board is probably um, for other computers as well then, for other models. Some uh, surface mount SMDs there. That must be the inverter board for the LCD panel. Another fan. So much of that fine horrible dust. Now let's uh, just plug it in, see what happens with the fans. Well, that one's come on, that one there has. That's the CPU one's kicking in. PSU fan looks not going. So it's that one there then. Well, why just suddenly stop working? So strange. And it should just shut down in a moment because it's put that uh, BIOS message up. I guess. There we go. So I guess the first thing to look at really before you even think about looking at the screen is the uh, power supply fan. I thought I could hear it starting up but it must have been one of these others. No. It's not starting is it? Never had a fan just go like that. A lot of graphics cards fans be really noisy and ratty where the bearings have gone, but very strange. I should shut down any second now. There we go. Well, not sure what to do next, really. I guess I'll try and get into that power supply board and have a look at that. And uh, maybe try and run this fan, check this voltage getting into it. See if we can run it separately from the computer. So next I um, checked the voltage outputs of that fan uh, just to make sure it was actually getting its 12 volts just in case something on the power supply board had gone. Uh, sure enough it was getting its 12 volts so the fault was definitely with the fan. I had a quick look on eBay for the fan. It's a Foxconn 12 volt 0.53 amp fan part number PVB080F12H and uh, there wasn't one on there I mean, for England anyway. Uh, I only found one in America, I think postage was something like $70 for some strange reason, for something that only weighs a few ounces. And of course I looked on sold items, and one had actually sold a couple of weeks ago, would you believe it? For about £15, £16, pounds, I think it was. So at this point I was about ready to give up and just call it a day. Uh, but then me being me, I thought, while I'm here, why don't I try and get that digitised off the front? And uh, see if we can get that off first without destroying the screen and then we'll uh, go back to looking at the uh, fan problem. So I proceeded to try and get access to the screen and it certainly wasn't easy. 
Uh, there's an awful lot of screws on this computer. In fact, I've never known a computer so slim have so many screws. Um, lots of types of different screws. Some are machined for the metal housing and some were for the plastic side. Uh, dismantling this, I think, it took me about 20 minutes. And finally, I got to the back of the screen. On the left-hand side there, you've got two lots of cables for the uh, fluorescent tubes because it's a dual lamp technology screen. And in the middle, you've got the actual LCD monitor cable itself. Uh, which is quite small actually to my surprise. I thought it would be a lot wider than that on the connection, but I guess technology has moved on. And as you can see, the uh, top left hand side of that screen, the glass is quite jagged and there's bits floating around inside of it. So I must be careful here that I don't cut myself. So the next thing to do is to try and look again at the actual panel off itself. And looking at it, it was actually stuck on with some kind of double sided um, foam tape. So I thought the best way to get this off would be to run a standing blade around it and gently pull it across um, without marking the screen. After some perseverance, the first piece of glass was off and I managed to not cut myself yet. Uh, I decided to take the rest of the uh, screen in the garden and do this just in case anything broke and just to keep myself a bit more room. And uh, after about 25 minutes, it was off. Unfortunately, I did manage to scratch the screen on the right side. Um, it's not too bad though. But I didn't manage to cut myself, which is quite surprising. So that was something. So now it was time to get it back in its case without damaging it any further. Uh, the first thing I had to do, obviously, was remove the digitizer cables because they would no longer be needed now. One thing for sure, this machine was certainly very dirty inside. And as a consumer, there's no way the average person would be able to get into this to give it a good clean out. I suspect that, that dust on that power supply fan probably went towards its demise. And if I didn't clean these other fans out, they would probably end up going the same way. So after reassembling the computer, it was time to now look at that fan problem. So I thought, what can I do as a temporary solution? And I rubbish through my uh, shed in my junk boxes, and sure enough I found an old fan. I thought if I could just trick the computer into, into running, I thought I could at least keep it going with the back off, uh, while I wait for a new fan to turn up on eBay. So I wired the new fan in place, connected all the cables, um, all the colours matched up the same, switched the computer on and the fan started spinning, so I thought great. But unfortunately it shut itself down again. It brought the same message up as it had before. For some reason the BIOS wasn't seeing the fan even though it was spinning. So I proceeded to mess around swapping cables around. I already knew that um, the red and black were 12 volts. So I messed about with the yellow and the blue cable because basically they were the sensors, or at least one of them was. And when I unplugged the blue cable, sure enough the fan spun up really fast, but the computer stayed on so the BIOS had seen it spinning. And if I reconnected the blue cable once the computer had booted up, it was enough to keep the computer actually running so the BIOS was happy and the fan was running slower, so it wasn't so noisy. And then disaster struck once again, but this time it was my own fault, my own negligence. I hadn't covered up all those wires, those bare wires for that temporary fan. And unfortunately, one of them ended up touching another, causing a short. Um, suddenly the fans were acting erratic. I got a little whiff of uh, burning. I quickly turned the computer off. And to my dismay when I turned it back on again, not only was the fan I just temporarily installed not working, but also the top left fan wasn't working either. So I thought, great, what have I done? So to cut a long story short, after some messing around, I couldn't see any burn marks on the motherboard because this is where the uh, power supply was coming from for these two fans. So I decided to bypass the motherboard altogether for the 12 volt rail, and I took the power for these two fans directly from the power supply. But the positive thing about this is, both fans run constantly, the BIOS is seeing them all running. Um, I did have to disconnect the two yellow cables, and I just had the two blue ones, because for some reason the fans wouldn't run at all when the two yellow ones were connected. This was an embarrassing mistake, but unfortunately sometimes these things happen. Well there you have it, I got there in the end didn't I? Um, had a few mishaps along the way, um, the biggest one obviously was shorting out that fan and uh, destroying the 12 volt rail on the motherboard. But uh, I've been running it now for a good few hours and it seems to be working just fine. 
Uh, all the fans are running constantly, like I mentioned before. Uh, taking its power directly from the uh, power supply, there's been no issues whatsoever. Um, the next thing to do will be to get the proper fan reinstall when I find one on eBay. Then I can put the back of the computer back on. But like I say, it seems to be running just fine. Um, I've tried installing a couple of games. Unfortunately, um, I've got this old sniper game here, Sniper Ghost Warrior. But you have to install an app called Steam so that you can run it. And I've not been very successful with that. There seems to be quite a few issues with that actually when you look online. Just installed Doom 3, that didn't seem to run. Um, I did try Alien Breed, got that one working. It was a bit sluggish in full, full HD 1920x1080. If I lower the screen resolution, it seems to work a little bit better. Um, YouTube works fine on it, and I must say it sounds absolutely fantastic for music. Uh, it's got a really good sound system built in. And the, the videos play back in full HD as well. So uh, this might be good for a music machine actually, get all my old uh, music loaded into it. Saves so having it up on the TV screen. Um, you could also put uh, Photoshop in it, couldn't you, as well, I suppose, and use it for doing uh, photo editing, it's got a nice big screen on it. Um, the screen looks quite good still as well, even with the glass panel off the front. It's just basically an X-Black screen uh, with a dual lamp technology, uh, minus the digitizer now. Well, it was quite a journey, wasn't it, that one? Um, I must admit, uh, I got quite uh, frustrated along the way and almost gave up, but I'm glad I persevered and carried on with it. At least this computer's got a new lease of life now, if I want to use it for anything else. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching that with me, warts and all. I've left all my mistakes in so that uh, I can remind myself in the future if I ever watch this back that things do and can go wrong sometimes. But I guess you just shouldn't let that dishearten you. Well, I guess that just leaves me to say, as always, thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll be seeing you. And if you did enjoy watching this video, you may want to take a look at some of my other videos on similar themes. I'm always buying something on eBay, some old piece of technology and trying to repair it. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Thanks for watching.